Hello, welcome to Endor N-Gauge Model Railway. In my previous video, which was about DAPOL HSTs, I said they didn't look as fast as real HSTs and that I wouldn't be measuring the speed. Well, I changed my mind and actually have measured the speed in two different ways. My first approach was to film the train going along a known distance and then look back at the footage to see how long it took. I was quite surprised that my video playback software doesn't seem to have an option for very detailed timestamps on footage, but it does allow me to advance the footage one frame at a time. So I counted how many frames it took the train to pass the ruler, and used the frame rate of the video to calculate how long that took. I put the ruler at the end of a straight section to allow the train as much of a run up as it could get, and I did the same going the other way too, because I'm pretty sure the railway isn't level based on how rolling stock rolls. But there can't be much in it, my ruler here is also a spirit level, and it says the track is level. The ruler is 0.6 metres long. In both directions the train started passing it pretty much at the start of a frame, but reached the end of it somewhere between frames, so my counts were 49 to 50 frames downhill and 48 to 49 uphill. That's odd because it means it was faster uphill, but it might just be that the motor runs better in that direction. I took the average as 49 frames to cover the distance. My phone says it records video at 30 frames per second, though the video is actually 30.02 frames per second according to the file details in Windows. In seconds, each frame lasts 1 divided by 30.02, and there are 49 of them, so the total time is 49 over 30.02, which is roughly 1.6 seconds. Speed is distance over time, so 0.6 divided by the time gives this number of meters per second. This model is 148 times smaller than the real thing, so its scale speed is 148 times bigger, which is about 54.4 meters per second. I used Google to translate that to miles per hour, and it comes out at about 121. That surprised me, it's not far off spot on in scale terms. So I was totally wrong and it shows how distorted perceptions can become. I've been stood at platforms when HSTs have gone through very fast, and I've been looking out of the window on HSTs travelling at 125 miles per hour when they've gone past stations and buildings. I can be certain what speed the HSTs were travelling because I did actually measure it using a GPS speed app on my phone, and also for a few years first Great Western HSTs had a TV display on the back of seats which showed the train's speed and location. But I suppose compared to my model railway I was a lot closer to the real thing, it filled my field of vision, and the sensation of speed may have been amplified by the noise and wind. It's also now got me wondering how fast trains have been travelling that I've seen on the main line when I haven't been particularly near them. I've often thought they were still getting up to speed having been at stations or slowing ready for stations or signals, but maybe they were actually going quite fast. To measure the speed of a real Super Voyager going past me, I've googled the length of a Super Voyager, it's about 118 metres, and counted the number of frames it takes from the near side of the front of the train being at the edge of the shot through to the near side of the rear of the train reaching that edge. It takes 89 frames, with the speed coming out at 92 miles per hour. Doing similar for a standard Voyager, that came out at 91 miles per hour. I took these videos over a year ago, so I can't remember what sensation of speed I had at the time, but looking at the footage I wouldn't have guessed those trains were going even as much as 70 miles per hour. Since I decided to make this video I thought it would be fun to try another approach to measuring the model's scale speed. I already had several infrared sensors ready for train detection on my T-gauge layout, so I decided to use those to get a hopefully more accurate speed reading, and to make it easier to measure different trains. I also have a Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller that's got connectors already soldered to it and which I've already used for various experiments, so that was easy to connect to the sensors and was ready for programming. I won't go into deep detail about the code, the overall approach is to measure from A to B, not B to A, and after a train has gone through B and not been detected for one second, the program resets its numbers ready for the next train. Having found a way to securely position the sensors, I pushed a dummy power car along to see at what point each sensor first detects it, measured the distance between the positions of the nose of the car, and then typed that distance in metres into my program. There's actually quite a big variation between liveries in where the train is detected. The Swallow livery is detected much earlier than the GWR Green, and I actually had to turn the sensors up to near their maximum sensitivity for them to detect the Green HST at all. 
so each train needed measuring to get the right distance value to insert into the program code. It was a bit of a faff to get the laptop and cables etc to sit in place nicely, so I only did the measurements in the downhill direction. The scale speed from only my downhill video frame rate test, in which the average number of frames is 49.5, is a scale 120 miles per hour. Once everything was set up, it was time to stand back and watch the numbers. To start with, the castle set registered a scale 116 miles per hour, which isn't super far off my first measuring technique with the video frame rate, but I was surprised to see that as the train went around, it was still picking up speed, long after its DCC acceleration setting could account for, which I set to value 7 on my locos for relatively responsive speed control. The speed increases weren't noticeable to me just watching the model. Eventually, it seemed to top out at 124 to 125. So, once it's warmed up, it's got a top speed that, in scale terms, perfectly matches the top speeds an HST will travel at on Britain's railways. But, that's a castle set, HST's short form to four coaches to have better acceleration. How does a model of a more standard eight coach HST fare? As with the castle set, my Swallow livery HST was getting slightly faster and faster as it ran around until eventually settling at a scale 115 miles per hour. So that's not the full scale speed of an HST, but it's not far off, and I couldn't really tell just watching the model that it was slower than the castle set. I wondered how fast it could go with two motorised power cars, but it would seem that not all power cars are equal. Neither my executive livery nor dynamic lines livery power cars could keep up, even when the Swallow was laden with eight coaches. In this footage, the dynamic lines is at its top DCC speed step of 28, while the Swallow is at step 24. So, this begs the question. What is the track speed velocity of an unladen Swallow? After several minutes, it seemed to settle on a scale 128 miles per hour. Maybe they go faster forward, but I wasn't interested in doing lots of experiments like that. Really, I was just interested in the speed of the HST as a whole. My Kato IET has always seemed like a fast model. Yet again, its top speed gradually increased with running, so that really does seem to be a thing with these models, and it eventually settled at around a scale 157 miles per hour. Once again, the Kato IET proves to be a superior machine. So, the Dapol HSTs aren't quite fast enough, but actually aren't all that far off. The IET is far too fast at full speed, and my own perception of train speeds needs recalibrating. For me, it's nice to know and has been interesting to measure, but I'm still just going to run the models at a scale speed that looks pleasing to me, because I find them more enjoyable that way. That's all for now. Bye bye!